I'm excited to do another round of broadhead testing today, and I'm going to do a few different videos, but they're all going to be focusing on the heavier weight heads that you would use for larger game or traditional archery or even up to dangerous game as big as Cape Buffalo and Elephant and so forth. So in this first round, I'm calling it the light heavyweight round, and this is the 200 grain broadheads. I'm shooting them through a, a footed arrow with a total arrow weight of right around 600 grains. Each of them will have through a 73-pound hoist carbon spider with a 27 inch draw length and I'm going to be testing a few different things I'm going to be testing the rotation of the heads through a, a, a few different mediums and then I'm going to be testing the durability of the heads they're all uh, pretty famous heads in their own right and have a great following uh, the first here is the aboyer and uh, the aboyer is a welded head it's actually two pieces that's been welded together and then brazed uh, from their stainless steel. And then the next is uh, Bishop makes their their Bridgeport model. This is their middle of the line model. They also, Bishop makes one out of S7 tool steel, tool steel, and this one is made out of 41L40 tool steel, single piece CNC machined head. Uh, the third is the Cutthroat Archery 200 grain head, and this one is also machined out of, uh, out of their steel. And then the final one here is the Grizzly Stick Ashby Head that is made out of their stainless steel and forged out of that. And so we have these four different heads that we're going to be testing. You can see they're roughly uh, very, well, they all have the exact same cutting diameter, which is one and one eighth inch, but they have very differing lengths. Three of them are exactly the same length. They go for the three to one Ashby ratio of length to width. The bishop has found in their research that they believe they get better rotation, uh, better penetration, and less surface area, and therefore better long-distance flight through a shorter head. And so this one is significantly shorter, and we'll see how they all pan out in this variety of tests that we're going to be doing. And again, we'll, we'll test them out for some of their rotational properties, which is significant in a two-blade head. And then we'll also test them out for their penetration in some really tough mediums and their durability through those tough now I'm going to put these all into this foam target. I have a bunch of soil and bags behind it, topsoil, and then a big bag target behind that. And hopefully it's not going to go through all that and into my neighbor's backyard. All right, we'll see what we get. And this is just to measure the rotation as it goes through the foam. It may not be the best medium with which to do it, but we'll see what happens. Just did the testing for the rotation, and this wasn't the best medium to use. I, I understand that the the denser, the more dense the medium that the arrow is penetrating through, the more resistance there is on the blade, and therefore the greater rotation there's going to be because the single bevels you can't really see it there. They they're edged in a way that they force a rotation through a dense medium. So foam is not the densest medium, and in dirt in a bag, certainly not the densest, most dense medium. Uh, but through this this simple foam target that I had, that's about 12 inches thick. Each of them rotated almost exactly the same, which was about 45 degrees. So just in a 12 inches of foam, they're rotating, you know, from this to this. So you're getting that uh, circular wound channel basically in there. Then as they went into the dirt, uh, three of them penetrated almost identical. The bishop continued to penetrate a little bit better. And so it got about an extra 20 degree penetration uh, through the bag and a half of dirt and the foam compared to the other heads. So, but all of them did very well in the rotational aspect. Here's my next test. We're gonna start the durability test and a bit of penetration testing, as well as continued rotation testing. I'm gonna see how these hold up, how the blades hold up. Sometimes with single bevels, you get edge chatter where the edges break because they're rotating. I wanna see how these different heads hold up. So we're gonna be going through this plywood and I have a, uh, first, a, th a thick half-inch plywood that's not, it's not normal plywood. I don't know how to describe it because I'm not a carpenter, but it's like super heavy and super dense layered wood that's a little different than normal plywood. Then I have a quarter-inch uh, regular piece of plywood behind it. And so we're going to see how these heads 
hold up to this and what happens. And I'm going to go in alphabetical order here with the shooting from now on. I'm going to go a Boyer and then Bishop, which is their Bridgeport model, and then a Cutthroat, and then a Grizzly Stick. This was interesting. It may be hard to see this, but all four of them penetrated through all the wood, which was pretty impressive. I wasn't expecting that. And, uh, and they all penetrated pretty similarly, although I'd say the Bishop Bridgeport penetrated just slightly less. I mean, it's got about maybe a quarter of an inch less sticking through than the others. However, it's also interesting to note that uh, the Bishop Bridgeport was the only one that rotated in the wood. The others went in, and you're not going to be able to really see this, but, but they went in and came out in the exact same position. The Bridgeport was able to get uh, a little bit of rotation about... 15 degrees is what I would estimate uh, in those two layers of wood, but that sacrificed uh, slightly in the penetration department. So interesting test. Let's see how these blades held up. I unscrewed the arrows from the heads, as you can see, embedded in the wood, and all of them unscrewed fine, except, as you can see here, the Grizzly Stick Ashby in their stainless steel it broke, and so the, the ferrule snapped off, which is one of the complaints of a single bevel, is that if the steel is not hardened properly, then uh, there's such a rotational force that it can just shear off, and unfortunately, it's not what you want to have happen in a dangerous game animal, but that is what happened. Now, it still penetrated decently, but that head, let me try to zoom in here. You can see the head where it's sheared off right at the ferrule there. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do any more testing. After the first part of the light heavyweight round, where we tested these 200 grain heads, we saw in the plywood there, the one and a quarter inch plywood, that the uh, grizzly stick 200 grain failed. It, it sheared off right at the ferrule. And in addition to that, you can see a significant amount of what they call edge chatter. You, you see on this, uh, this edge, if I can get my finger in there, right there, you can see that as it rotates into the wood, um, it just, it, it really kind of broke off right there. And it did the same thing on the other side, not as significantly. You can see a little chip there, but over here, fairly significant. That's because honestly, they hardened the stainless steel way too hard for a stainless steel and in a single bevel like this it's just going to experience a lot of edge chatter and and you're also going to get uh you know shearing off and, and fractures like that so now we're going to shoot them into two layers of 22 gauge sheet metal backed up by this a quarter inch plywood or half inch plywood and uh and i got a bunch of stuff behind that just in case so let's see what happens That was the bishop, and now the cutthroat. There's you. Okay, if you look at these two heads, they both went through, obviously, the sheet metal and went through the half inch of plywood. But you can see the bishop bridge port, the blade is completely embedded, and the cutthroat, it's still sticking out about, oh, half an inch or so. Here are the two heads, the 200 grain heads, the bishop bridge port on the left and the cutthroat on the right after going through the two pieces of sheet metal and the half inch plywood again. And you can see it's interesting that it's only, you know, somewhat slight, but you can see there's a little better what, what single bevel heads call an S curl, uh, S cut with the one on the left, which is the bishop. You see it opened up a little bit wider hole, it rotated a bit more then the, uh, the cutthroat still did. You see that, that rotation, um, but the blades are pretty much straight up, whereas the bishop, you can see it 
bending it and it opened up a little bit better hole. And in terms of edge chatter, both did really well going through this, uh, this plate. You got a little bit of edge chatter on the cutthroat. You can see that the two nicks there on the right side. Let me see if I can zoom in. Yeah, but that's not very much. You know, it's both uh, actually did really well. Here's the bishop over here. It still is in pristine condition. You can see some of the, the marks on these heads. That's from the drill. When I, I was using the drill to get them out of the plywood. It was so hard, and sometimes the drill would hit against the ferrule. But, uh, but both of these heads did well. Slight edge in rotation and entrance hole, and uh, no edge chatter to the Bishop Bridgeport. The final test I'm going to do for these light heavyweights with the two that remain, the Bishop, Bridgeport, 200 grain, and the um, Cutthroat, 200 grain, is I'm going to shoot them at this one inch thick heavy cinder block. It's like one inch and then there's a, a space in, and then there's another inch, but it's really heavy. First the Bishop and then the Cutthroat. came back and hit me in the chest. I'm standing behind this board to try to block it. I'm wearing safety goggles. So as we conclude the light heavyweight round, we tested, we started off with three heads. We had the, uh, the Bishop Bridgeport, their middle of the line model in 200 grains. And then we had the Cutthroat um, in 200 grains, and both of these CNC machined out of tool steel, and then uh, and then a third we had the Grizzly Stick Ashby head in 200 grains. So after putting these through a variety of tests that you just saw, that you saw in the very beginning, the Ashby got a significant amount of edge chatter and it just sheared off. These heads are just, they're, they're, they're too hard. They're hardened too hard for stainless steel like that. It, I, I've read a million reviews on them, and these tests only prove that out even more. Uh, the Bishop and the Cutthroat both performed, honestly, incredibly well through all of the mediums. I mean, these are just tough, well-designed heads. Got a little bit more edge chatter with the Cutthroat. Uh, but not that much. And again, this was in Bishop's 41L40 and then the Cutthroat tool steel. I, I'm not sure exactly what steel they're using, but also CNC machines. So both of these are comparable heads. Uh, got a little bit more rotation in the different mediums, a little bit more S-cut from the Bridgeport because of its stout design and it, uh, it tapers, it, it comes, it gets broader faster so it pries things apart a little bit more effectively, and it's going to fly better just because it has less surface area, but both performed well in this test.